Welcome to the Foster Friendly Podcast, where we come together to make a difference in the lives of children in foster care and the families who care for them. Foster Friendly Communities are part of a nationwide movement by America's Kids Belong that helps people from all walks of life take action and help kids and families thrive. You'll hear from former foster youth, foster and adoptive parents, social workers, faith and business leaders, and other experts on how to engage in meaningful ways. Our hosts, Brian, Travis, and Courtney, explore inspiring stories of everyday people making a difference in foster care where they live and work. Welcome to another episode of the Foster Friendly Podcast. I'm Travis Fonksness with my co-host, Courtney Williams. Really excited for our episode today where we're talking with a single foster dad about his journey into fostering that started in his 20s. He'll share about his experiences and the insights he's learned along the way. He also runs a foster-friendly business and really has a unique perspective as a foster dad himself. Our guest today is Nicholas Kelly, who is in Gainesville, Georgia, currently fostering two kids and helps run his family-owned business, Kelly's Tavern and Grill, in Gainesville. Now, if we stop into Kelly's, what do we need to get on the menu? Gainesville Burger <laughs> or okay. the Bray Short Rib. All right. Well, there we go. So... There it is. So welcome to the podcast, Nicholas. Glad to be here. Yeah, thanks for being here today. Can you just take a little bit of time and tell us a little bit more about yourself, your business, and what's maybe a fun fact about you that others don't know? Sure. Um, 32, obviously, single. As I said, <laughs> foster dad. I currently have two placed in the home, and I have four siblings. My two parents, we all work together in the business, along with aunt, uncle, cousins. You know, it's truly a family affair. Wow. Um, fun fact. I, my caffeine intake is probably dangerously <laughs> medically upsetting. <laughs> medically. <laughs> you don't have like an IV tap or anything going through like a, if, the, the, if the i could i would <laughs> so we're not up to that yet but it's still no but i will make my coffee at home in a coffee pot and take the pot with me yeah <laughs> so this business is it where you, did you grow up in that business or has it been a newer how long my, has it been around we've been open this will be our third year okay so still fairly new um, my older brother owns a restaurant in Cornelia, Georgia. So that's kind of where it started. They've been open for 12 years, I believe. Okay. Prior to this, it was not anywhere on my radar. I worked pharmacy. So that's what I did. Interesting. Right out of high school until they convinced me to come to the restaurant. Gotcha. <laughs> I love the family feel. I, you can just kind of tell when you go into a restaurant and it's ran like that. You, yeah. Right. You know. Yeah, there's just something different and, and fun about that. Yes, for sure. Well, part of the reason you're on here is about your foster care journey. Tell us about your fostering journey and how did that all come about? I think the journey started before I even could put the pieces together to realize what it was going to be. Um, I grew up very involved in church, um, being in the youth ministry. Usually it was middle school, high school aged, but I did that from... 2009 until 2020, really. So a good 10, 11 years of doing that, which sometimes I look back on it now and I'm thinking, they let a 19-year-old, 20-year-old take care of all these middle and high schoolers? Like, <laughs> you know, but no, I think it started there. I knew that I always wanted to have kids and be involved and be that helping hand. And I think it just kind of finally played together and I got so tired of people telling me that you had to be married to have kids or you had to be married to do this. Mm -hmm. um, and I got really worried to begin with because I didn't think people would really be on board with it or support me. But I was mm -hmm. almost waiting for my family and friends to tell me like, no, you can't do it to try to talk me out of it. Mm -hmm. But finally, when it came about, that was not the way that it worked out. It was more full support in that area. So then it just kind of played in hand. Hmm. 
So you were, were you a little surprised then that you weren't getting some of that, hey, you know, what are you doing? Or uh, I'm a little worried here for you. I mean, overwhelming support is what you're saying. Yes. And it was, you know, sometimes from people, I mean, you know, I, I tried to tell everyone in different stages. So it was like between my parents, I would tell them. And, you know, of course, parents worry about anything, you know, yeah. their biggest concern was, you know, heartache on my part. Not necessarily that I couldn't do it by any means. It was just what you're opening yourself up to, I guess. But no, I didn't have not a, not a single yeah. person to be like, oh, do you really want to do this? Right. Yeah. What was, I'm curious that the social <laughs> services staff, were they super welcoming and encouraging to you as well? Or what was that like? I think it was a surprise to a lot of people. I remember I went straight into a private agency and it's families for families. Um, so I contacted their person through their impact classes to sign up for more information. And I think for the longest time, because at that time it was right in the middle of COVID. So everything was via zoom. Um, and people were a lot of husbands and wives that were doing the classes together would be in separate screens, like in different locations, doing the classes together. So I think for the longest time, the people in that class were trying to figure out like where the other person was that matched up with me. Mm-hmm. But, <laughs> you know, it was, I think people were surprised, but I think they were more like, you know, that's great. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, there were several things that came up, even an impact that you had to worry about just because, you know, sometimes having two people in a home with foster kids, especially no bio kids of my own, just safety concerns. I mean, you know, you don't have that second person. So if there's yeah. any kind of concern <laughs> raised against the parent itself, then, mm. you know, yeah. so it was trying to figure in that out, finagling it just to make sure that we were covered. Sure. Well, <clears throat> one, one funny little little story of i previously Nick, nicholas and i have interv- i've interviewed nicholas and and we got some um some great some videos which we'll share in the show notes f- of that he did the interview with but uh in that we also shared with america's kids belong on social media just some of those clips and you know funny was that you started to get some responses from w- other single women out there seeing that you were a single foster dad and suddenly it was like, I'm available. What about this guy? And so we're all joking going like, I mean, okay, the foster friendly movement here. Okay. I guess we're, people are trying to make space for dating and like the app. Is there, so it's I mean, like, you said it's on Instagram or which one? Well, they <laughs> were like curious. I mean, it was, I mean, people were, you know, everything from he's fine to like, uh, is this guy available still and all this stuff. But it's just like, we were laughing because it's, you know, it's, but I mean, that's true. There's singles across the country doing this and it's definitely part of your story, but, um, yeah, we definitely got some good laughs over that. I'm, I'm that sure situation. It's, it's, it's definitely a, a different playing field when it comes to first being single, then fostering kids Yeah. to, I mean, you know, you could meet someone, I could meet someone at the restaurant and it'd be fine and dandy and then find out that I'm fostering two kids and it's just, oh, Shh you know <laughs> yeah totally yeah so i'm gonna be curious as we continue to talk more about some of the challenges and the things like that that you face before all that like you know you're you're a seasoned veteran already at this point um at age 32 you said um being a foster parent what so far has been some of the best helpful advice you've been given um on being a foster parent I think very early on, the best advice, and I still use it to this day, is to find your support. You know, obviously, I have friends and family that are a huge support, but you have to find your support just inside the foster care world itself. Um, um, because it's a whole ball game, a whole new ball game compared to just normal, everyday, getting married, having your own kids kind of life. And I um, mean, that's, that stands true. I mean, I had to get involved with, obviously, my agency has the support with other connections and foster parents where they get the foster parents together. So you kind of meet people in your area, that kind of thing. So that's been the biggest help. I mean, I have six or seven other foster moms that I am in communication with every day, all day, 
just so we can run things by each other. Very cool. Uh, yeah, it's actually crazy. I have a team, a mission team from a youth group staying at my house right now. They're from Tennessee and we're doing some service projects for the, a single foster mom and, and some other things for the fostering community. And so they asked me to talk to this group about foster care the other night. And we were sitting there chatting, you know, these are 16 to 18 year old young adults. And um, I was telling them, I said, in these two weeks alone, we are interviewing for our podcast, two single foster dads that started fostering in their 20s. And so the conversation kind of shifted and they were asking me, like, what advice would you give if I wanted to start fostering, you know, when I became 20, 21, what advice would you give to a 21 year old? What do they need? What would I need if I wanted to do that? So how would you answer that question? You know, those young ages entering this realm, is there anything that you would advise them on? I would say be ready to change every thought that you've ever had about what you do. I'm a very... I'm very OCD and I've, I've been that way. I'm, I like it, things a certain way. Things have to be, you know, straight and neat. Um, but by the time you introduce this kind of life, it's like, you just have to kind of go with the flow sometimes because you truly never know what, what's going to happen when you're going to get a phone call. You know, they can call and say they're bringing a three-year-old and show up and you have a seven-year-old that you had no idea that <laughs> that's what you were getting. So be ready for, just anything to happen. Yeah. yeah. Flexibility is a key. Huh? Yes, definite flexibility. But to also, you know, put your, get that support group and make sure it's found. I mean, make sure it's solid and that you have them. Yeah. I lo well said. That was pretty much exactly what I told them was the support, you know, as a foster yes. mom myself, knowing, you know, sometimes you've got great friends that aren't going to be great friends for your fostering journey. And not that they're not your mm -hmm. friends anymore, but it just looks differently with people that understand. Like you were saying, those people you text all the time, they get it. They're in the thick of it like you are. And you can talk about things differently than with your other friends. Right. Mm. Yeah. And so, I mean, even, comp even with, I'm sorry, no. with my friends and brothers' kids, I mean, it's hard. Even though they're very close and similar in age, they're still two different types of parenting styles. I mean. You know, you have a four-year-old that was born into a loving family and has been with them the entire time. And then you have a four-year-old that was pulled from a home and then dropped into someone else's home that you just kind of have to go around. And that's not a normal, sometimes mm -hmm. your friends or your family can't answer those or help mm -hmm. you out in that because they, they can't relate. Hmm. It's kind of sticking along those lines, but what have been some of your biggest challenges fostering and some of your greatest rewards? The biggest challenges are definitely not knowing what the day will bring sometimes as far as, you know, the, the appointments, medical, dental, you know, the agency require, you know, you have to go to the dentist six months in, and then you have to go another six months, but it has to be in that same month that it's due. It can't be, you know, a couple of days late in July. So it's just making sure you can work that and finagle it with a schedule. Obviously I'm working full time at the restaurant. So that's probably the biggest challenge when it comes to making sure I can have all of them taken care of with what they need to be and also still be present at work. That's a lot. Definitely. A lot <laughs> at the shoulder. But that's yeah. where your support system comes into place. Yes. Obviously, yes. like you've said. Yeah. Thankfully, with the pharmacy experience in life, that has helped tremendously when it comes to kids that need any any medical type things. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, I've heard you also kind of say too, uh, before, you know, you and I have talked prior where you've talked about there's that aspect as a single dad out there, like at a medical appointment, all these different things where there's sort of this uh, perception around, especially men that are with appointments and kids and, you know, where, where's mom, you know, you get these comments yes. and you kind of talked about, you know, a lot of that's it's, you're used to dealing with that. Um, and, but you know, the, the sort of stereotypical bumbling dad, you know, that's that, that can't right. manage this. Um, I, I did actually apologize cause I probably pushed that stereotype from my, me being the bumbling dad <laughs> that you kind of inherit sort of that, but yeah, that, that actually is something that, you know, it isn't just the comments 
and then you saying no it's i am you know there isn't a mom it's me but like but also like i guess hearing that a lot kind of does that impact you in a way a little bit like discouraging wise or like just that people don't just assume that i can't handle this like it it definitely can be discouraging i think it's it's one of those where it becomes now at this stage is more irritating mm. i think than discouraging you know when you feel like you're fighting obviously you're fighting for these kids in the best interest every day that you have them but then right. on top of that then you feel like you're fighting to get someone to trust that you know what you're talking about as the dad because they're like are you sure? Like mm. you do breathing treatments? Are they good? Like, do they? And I'm like, yeah, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, it's a simple, just, I just got back from the beach and, you know, I have a five-year-old and a one-year-old with me at the moment. And when you have to change a diaper, obviously you've got to take the five-year-old with you. And some of the men's bathrooms still don't even have changing tables. So you've got to finagle and figure out where you can even get a diaper changed, especially if you walked up and you didn't drive your car. So then you're, you know, yeah. Gosh, I didn't even think of that. And then, yeah, it's a lot. Um, so yeah, what, but as a single dad, um, which I'm so inspired a, just, you know, again, your capacity and, and the ability to pull all that off and be so resilient and, you know, also of course using your support system, but talk a little bit more about your support system um, maybe you already kind of alluded to this some, but like in the day to day or just like, it sounds like you have a, a circle of other, you know, foster moms that you're able to sort of get peer support on, but what, what else does your support system look like and how does all that work? Obviously, like I said, my parents jump in. I mean, you know, if it wasn't for my mom being able to, you know, if the five-year-old has an appointment here, but the one-year-old has to be picked up from, because they're in two separate daycares to make sure, you know, He's picked up by the time he needs to be picked up. So she'll grab one or the foster families that I'm close to live five, seven minutes away from me. So they're like, oh, I got it. Like, I'll, I'll run and grab him. No big deal. To just having that person to talk to with whatever's going on, even if it's just venting. I mean, sometimes just talking it out and not needing a resolution is the best thing you can do just because someone's listening. And I know it's, you've got to have hard days, right? Days where you probably want to give up. Um, but you're keep doing it. So where does yeah. your inspiration come from? What keeps you going? I think faith is the, the biggest. I mean, if I wasn't, you know, didn't have a God that I truly knew that the good grace came from, that I wouldn't be able to do it every day. I mean, you know, there's that support, you know, that comes from prayer and being able to call on help that's outside of just your normal family, friends, and your support group. Um, it makes it bearable when you're in those really, really hard times. Um, what was the other question? Yeah, just what keeps you going? What keeps you doing this every day? Seeing the change in the kids. Um, even if it's not my own, I have foster families and I see doing it as well when we're together. I mean, it's just that inspiration seeing them reunified back with parents or if it goes the other direction, seeing them find that forever home with someone else. You know, we can't make a difference in everyone, but if we make a difference in at least one, then it's the greatest thing in the world. Yeah. You know, I don't, Go ahead. I don't see it all the time. You know, it's hard. I think as a foster parent, when you're with them all the time to see the growth and the change. And sometimes I, I find myself in that, like, or am I really making a difference? But then when a caseworker comes over, somebody comes over and is like, do you realize how mm. much this child has changed in the three months they've been in your home? And, mm. you know, that they're not doing this anymore, but they're now responding in this way. Um, sometimes we just overlook those things doing the day-to-day -day work. And, and sometimes it takes, like you said, that caseworker, we were at the beach and my best friends that we were there with, they just at one point looked at me and they're like, you're just so patient. And I'm thinking, am I? really? <laughs> and they're like, you've just been so good with the kids because the one-year-old at that stage decided he would not allow anyone else to touch, look at, hold, play with, you know, he was attached to me and me alone. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and that felt like I was just going to go crazy just because I couldn't get anything done from holding him. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was just that inspiration that gave me back by saying, you're doing such a great job when I even didn't 
necessarily feel like I was, at least from them, they knew that it was. Yeah, I love that. I love what you actually both said about, you know, first Nicholas is just about your faith and, and sort of there's a, there's a divine grace you're feeling there's, there's more to it than just your in your humanity, what you feel like you're able to actually even do. But just like what you both said about just even in the small day to day moments of, of what you see, maybe sometimes it's bigger, more dramatic things, but even just the smaller things. And then to, to be told and encouraged by others around you, the, the little things. I also think, and you guys know this well, of just like with foster care, part of the, the, the difficulty as well is there's a lot of stuff we I guess we will never see the impact and you know just knowing that down the line um what what you're setting up for these kids now in a, being a stable and loving place may set them on a trajectory that you'll never know that story you know right. so i guess that that's part of the difficulty as well but that's where faith comes in as well and yeah i've actually had two different foster youth that we had years and years ago that you know that you lose touch you try you try but you just you know life happens and parents don't allow that or whatever it might be. And so years down the road, two different foster youth have found me on Facebook and reached out saying, Hey, one of them specifically, I'm, I'm pregnant. I'm going to be a mom. And I don't really have a mom figure in my life. And I remember when, again, this is 15 years ago now. And I remember 15 years ago being in your home and, and the things you taught me, hmm. would you mentor me in being a mom? And I was like, Whoa, just blew me away. Like, one of those things that you think you'll never con have contact with them again. Wow. Right. But they do remember. They really do. That's super cool. And yeah. that, that, I think you're right. That's one of the hardest not knowing. You know, I had a three day old for three days. It was just kind of the in between before they moved him to a, another home hmm. with all the siblings involved. I mean, that was, I didn't think that I could get attached to someone or be so involved in a child's life for three days, but for him to leave and go to somewhere else that I had no idea where it was going or how that was going to work out. I mean, it was hard. Mm -hmm. What is your response to, to people where, you know, and maybe family or well-meaning, but just like that thing of, you know, I just get too attached. I'm worried that you're getting too attached. I mean, kind of what is, what is the way you, you find that you respond to, to hearing that? I think if you, don't get attached, then something's not right. And it's not clicking somewhere. Mm. My goal the entire time was I want to be attached. I want to get attached. If I can be that difference in that child's life right then and there to make them feel loved, supported, safe, and provide them with whatever they need, and then they have to go somewhere else, reunify and move to another home, that I can handle the attachment that I've formed because I know that I've helped that child in their time of need. Love that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you have your support and that's where another part of support comes in. I feel like, you know, too, it's just, it it's not just in the day to day making this work. It's, you know, how can we harness the support and the grieving the, you know, maybe it's taking a season off of just saying, you know, this actually has been really tough. Um, and I want to keep doing this, but I need to give myself permission to step out for a while and right. to, you know, seek kind of comfort and, community and kind of and then get restored again and come back i mean that's 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 huge for sure so well let's pivot into um talking more about you then as a as a business owner or family-run business uh kelly's tavern and that being a foster friendly business in georgia which is on the foster friendly app um what what motivated you to become a foster friendly business and where did that whole part come in in this kind of story with you as, as a foster dad as well you know with being in the restaurant business for the past however many years at my brother's restaurant prior to this you know you have so many people that come in and from school systems from organizations and they're wanting you know to sponsor this event or to help with this event so once i got involved into fostering that was where i wanted to focus trying to put back what we could you know, of course, we love to support schools and benefit and sponsor whatever we can. But, you know, that was something that was very near and dear to my heart as well as my family's because we're involved in it. So we wanted to be there for other foster families. And obviously, we, go ahead. you know, as a 
um, family run business. Was it an easy family decision? Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we, we mainly, for the most part, we all get along. I mean, you know, when you have five siblings yeah. with your parents and you come to a decision, sometimes it can get a little back and forth, but we tell our staff that all of us can get along and you never see us fighting <laughs> with each other, then we expect all of you to get along. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so where, where did you, where did you hear about the whole thing about foster friendly businesses in Georgia and kind of how, how did that even come to mind as far as I think it came up maybe at a seminar I was at or someone had mentioned it in passing because I was unaware I had to look into it. And even my agency had never even heard of it. Mm -hmm. So I started researching it and to it. And obviously I downloaded the card for myself to see what was available in the area. And that was prior to even opening the business. So yeah. But after that, it was, I knew that's exactly what I wanted to put back was come into the business, enjoy a great meal, happy faces, mm -hmm. good service, good food. But, we want to give back to you as you give to the community itself. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Well, I feel like if you're listening and this is all new to you hearing about this foster friendly app and what are foster friendly businesses, you know, let's, let's talk a little bit, Courtney, just about, um, yeah. What is that? You know, it isn't available at this point in every single state as well. So do you want to share a little bit more about foster friendly businesses and the app and just give a little bit of a yeah. snapshot? Yeah, the way I tell um, businesses, you know, I go and recruit businesses to be on the app and I tell them, you know, there's many great causes out there. There's many people that are doing great work, but there's some things that are different about foster families. Um, one of those things being they're on call 24 hours a day. You know, it's not like this job that you go to and then you come home and you're off. You're on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You never know. You know, a family could go from two kids at the breakfast table to five kids at the dinner table, just like that and not have, you know, not really a heads up, right? Mm -hmm. um, so just coming alongside those families, they're often dealing with hard things. And when a business is willing to say, hey, I'll support this family. I'll support these kids in care. It does make a difference. You know, we have hard days. We have days when we do. I mean, we've had mm -hmm. up to 11 kids in our home before. Some That one time, it was three kids that literally came within an hour of me finding out about them right at wow. dinner time. And that, thankfully, wow. I had friends that rallied around and brought me a meal that night and helped me out. But you know, to have a pizza place or a, a place like Kelly's Tavern to say, hey, we're going to help mm -hmm. that family tonight because they just have three kids that were unexpectedly placed in their home. And like I said, it does make a difference. And not even just business or restaurants, mm -hmm. but things like haircuts for these kids, um, experiences. You know, I mm -hmm. live in, a, in Durango, Colorado. There's a lot of fun things to do. There's a lot of outside stuff, but it's all really expensive. Right. So, you know, encouraging the ski places, the the resorts, the other places to say, hey, I want these kids that are in care to experience things that our other kids get to experience as well. Um, mm. and, and it makes those kids feel part of the community, part of a family that, you know, and, and the family to feel like this community is supporting me. They're yeah. rallying around us and I can keep doing this because I know my community has my back. Yeah, that's uh, well said. So in the show notes, we'll have links to, so you can see, okay, here's more about foster friendly businesses. Here's more about the app. Is this in my area? And and kind of go from there. So anyway, just want to throw that part out as we're listening to this and, and getting more information on this foster friendly business aspect. So, yeah. So yeah, Nick, tell us a little bit more about Kelly, how Kelly's is supporting foster families. You know, what is, what do they provide for foster families? So people kind of even get a, a feel of what that looks like. You know, somebody goes to the app and what is like, what do you guys offer? And then have you seen any ways that your business has directly impacted a certain family or, or your own staff in supporting the foster families? We offer a 15% off total bill, excluding alcohol, um, which is the biggest discount that we provide to general. I mean, we do, you know, veterans discount, which is great. It's just, we wanted to show that this is where our heart's at for other foster families. And I know what it's like trying to take a one and a five-year-old to dinner. You know, you just feel like they're not, they're jumping up and down, they're running around trying to get that. And we're good with that. I mean, because we get it. We get it. We get what it's like to have these kids. And if they're crazy or throwing stuff in the floor, then it's fine. We got it. And my staff has jumped on. Obviously, they've seen me and my two at the moment. And 
they're just all hands on deck because they have the biggest heart for these families as well because they know and have seen what it's like for my family. That's great. And that reminds me, you know, part of a business being on the app, they also get a little business packet that helps them. And we even have people go into businesses and do short trainings with their staff. But when they become a foster friendly business, they get a little packet. And it does say like, these are some things that you can do to help support these families. Do these things. Don't do these things. You know, use this language. Don't use this language. So we really are educating the community in this way as well. And these businesses and the people that work for them. And it's great. Even since the releases the articles that have been released so far to see new families new foster families come in actually had a family tuesday or wednesday night of this week call and ask to do their adoption party here because they were adopting they had their finalized adoption that afternoon i did not know them Hmm. but they saw the article or i maybe their adoption attorney knew of it from the article and i mean they brought in 30 40 people just because they wanted to celebrate in another business that supported foster families. That's awesome. Yeah, that's super cool. And I'm sure, yeah, part of it is hopefully you will continue to get increased traction there from some of this exposure on social media, which may have been that case. But I've also interviewed a caseworker in Georgia, and I'm sure this is becoming more widespread as well, who really is a supporter of the app herself. And, and actually in their recruitment, um, for their community um, with foster families, she's talking about it up front as this, this all, already this is a tangible way I, I can tell you your community's got your back. And so that's a really powerful way that we're already seeing on the front end of even recruitment of families coming in knowing, hey, you know, if there's businesses like Kelly's Tavern that are helping us, giving us discounts, seeing us, all that kind of stuff. I mean, do you have... Situations too, where I guess when you have the time or whatever, you're able to come out on the floor if you know oh, a family sitting there and you're, hey, sure. I, I know your I know your yes. pain, guys, and your <laughs> yes. joys too, or whatever. That's one of my biggest, one of the happiest things that I can do is if one of my servers comes and tells me that there's a foster family that said they're a foster family. I mean, I want to talk to them. I want to know what they're going through, and I mean, you know, like we said, sometimes it's that support that maybe they just needed someone to talk with for just a few minutes about what what they're going through and what's going on or what's new Mm. um and that that's exactly what we want i mean even this that small support once you step inside the doors our motto if you go to our website is where everyone's family and again where it's a family business and obviously that's what we want for everyone but we truly try to treat everyone that comes through as family very cool Just like the kids that enter your doors, right? Being that family, whether it's the three days or three months. Yeah. Yeah. And then the added component, like you said, of it it is your own biological family running this. And so then you're, you know, kind of welcoming everyone else to that experience as well. Just join our, join the family. Very cool. Well, we, we definitely know, you know, one of the themes of this conversation is just that, you know, as foster parents, we all need support. Um, Foster parents need support to keep going, um, can't do it without their communities, without their support systems. Um, Nicholas, what if you could give sort of a closing message to help motivate others to consider fostering, but also businesses um, to support those in their communities? What, what would you kind of say to maybe both audiences there? That you can do something to make a difference. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to become a foster parent. You don't have to, you know, as a business, give a hundred percent discount and give stuff for free, but do something, do learn more about it. If you don't know anything about it, research it, have those conversations, ask the questions, and then start asking what you can do to help others. That we all have a role to play. We can all do something. Yeah, that's, that's a home run message. That's a, as simple of a message as it can be, and it's a true message. So, yeah, well said. And, yeah, uh, th- thank you so much for taking some time out of your yes. busy day fueled by caffeine to continue <laughs> on. For sure. <laughs> in all you're doing. But thanks so much for joining the Foss Family Podcast with us yes. today. Thank yeah, you all so much for having you. Me. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. If so, will you help us reach more people by subscribing, sharing the podcast with a friend, and leaving a five-star review? 
If you've been inspired by what you've heard today and want to learn more of how you can make a difference for kids in foster care and the foster families where you live, visit americaskidsbelong.org. We depend on individual donors to fund our work. We'd be grateful if you would consider joining us as a monthly donor. Visit americaskidsbelong.org to make your tax-deductible donation. Thank you. Together, we can ensure a family for every child in foster care and a foster-friendly community to ensure every foster family feels loved and supported.